Good morning, St. Mark's. I know many of you uh, that watch this online and were expecting Pastor Deborah Clark, but uh, this morning, about uh, quarter of seven, my phone rings as I'm having my first cup of coffee and watching the news, and it's, uh, it comes on my screen as Pastor Deborah Clark. I fumble, can't answer it. I'm figuring, okay, she butt dialed me. Uh, about five minutes later, it comes again, and she informs me that she is sick. And if any of you that know Pastor Deborah Clark, she doesn't miss anything. And so if she says she's sick, you know that she is sick. Uh, and I've also learned a long time ago, you don't ask a woman what kind of sickness she has. That's her business. And if she's, if she's sick, uh, we, it, so be it. Uh, I would ask that you continue to pray for her this week. I know that she'll be back at it tomorrow. But continue to pray for uh, a speedy recovery. You know, one of the things that Pastor Deborah has been doing for us in this time of the pandemic is the study of the book of Nehemiah. And today was supposed to be the last day uh, of the study. And many probably ask, in a time of rebuilding, why are we even going into the Old Testament? A lot of us, me included for a long time, we like the stories in the New Testament. Or we like to go to, to Genesis and, and those kind of stories. We don't really like all that stuff that's in the middle. But I want to give you a visual this morning to kind of see why it is important as Christians that we study uh, the, the Old Testament. And if you, would, if you have your Bibles at home, try this. Put your thumb, your left thumb at the book of Genesis and put your right thumb at the book of Matthews and hold your Bible up. There's a lot of stuff in the middle, isn't there? And this is the stuff as a church that we probably have not studied. Well, guess what, folks? The stuff in the middle here is our story. Pastor Deborah Clark understands that. And as our pastor, her responsibility is to equip us to be the rebuilders of the church. I truly feel that this pandemic that we are experiencing now is a time for opportunity. A time for opportunity for the church. A, ch a time to rise up, which you'll hear in a song later on. And it needs to start. And, and there's a song that recently came out by uh, Casting Crowns titled Right Here, Right Now. And it's a call for the church to rise up and rebuild. I want to try to just give you some... Uh, References to what we have heard so far from Pastor Deborah in, uh, in the study uh, of Nehemiah, uh, as, I, as I find the proper page for it. Uh, and several, several years ago, Pastor Deborah gave some of the leaders of the church a New Testament leadership Bible. And it was meant to teach us as leaders how to be biblical leaders. And, uh, and it has uh, certainly been so. Uh, and in the book of Nehemiah, what we've heard, first of all, in the last few weeks is that, uh, first of all, Nehemiah believed in the power of prayer. As a matter of fact, what's the first thing that Nehemiah did in our study uh, before he even started building the wall, rebuilding the wall, is he got down on his knees and prayed. Nehemiah believed in constant prayer, common sense, he believed in rousing speeches, Brilliant planning. He was a godly politician who motivated the Israelites to complete the reconstruction of the wall. You look at the other characters within Nehemiah, uh, Sand Sandoblot, he was uh, controlled by jealousy. He was jealous that Nehemiah was chosen by the king to go by and could go back into Jerusalem and rebuild the wall. Therefore, you saw his jealous anger. Tobiah, his other enemy, was concerned about the loss of power. Does it sound uh, like it may be applying to today's world sometime? At the end of this description of Nehemiah is this quote. 
a person's spiritual condition before God is the key to their political and social condition before one another. Let me say that one more time. A person's spiritual condition is the key to their political and social condition before one another. Of course, what that means, if we are letting be the Holy Spirit be what comes near to us, what teaches us, and what guides us, we will be the face of Jesus out in the world. Apostle Paul said we were not to assimilate the secular world, but we were to be within the secular world so they too could hear the good news of Jesus Christ. Think about it. What of those, what qualities do you have that are spiritual that allow you to be a good citizen? We have an example right here in our church. Uh, many of you, and uh, those of you who aren't viewing, you'll enjoy this story, know Alan Keller. But what a lot of people may not know about Alan Keller is that Alan was in the United States Air Force and flew jets. He was, a, he was a fighter pilot, for heaven's sake. And generally, when we hear that, we think about uh, Top Gun, uh, egos, and getting all the girls, and hanging out in the bars, and, uh, and, uh, and that kind of persona. But those of you who know Alan Keller would no, never know, have known that Alan Keller was a fighter pilot because he does not display the qualities of the secular world he displays the qualities of the spiritual world. And he is a great leader because of that. And people, I believe, see something that he has that they won't. How will we be rebuild our wall? Or how will we tear down the walls that sometimes keep people from our church? We've been given instructions in the Bible on how to do this. And mainly it's done one day at a time. There was a recent story about uh, Pat Robertson and the CBN. They just celebrated, I think, 50, 50, 59 years. Started in 1961, Pat Robertson did. And what, what a story. It doesn't matter how, if you agree with them politically or theologically. Uh, it is a fa fascinating story. A man with a law degree from Yale, for heaven's sakes, makes a decision or actually gets called to become a voice for God. And he decides he's going to, be, he's going to do it through the airwaves. And, and the story starts that he bought a transmitter and his wife ran the first camera and they did a broadcast that went about two blocks from his house. It was all that they were able to do. And then you look at what has happened since then with CBN. You look at the beautiful facility, Regency University, the things that have occurred. And many asked Pat Robertson, or assumed, Pat Robertson, what a great man of vision. He was able to plan this all out, and gosh, not many people could do it. But when they asked Pat Robertson how he accomplished that, he said this simple thing. He said, I just took what God told me to do, one day at a time. And he said that every day he would get a different message. Okay, today I want you to do this. Today I want you to do this. And look what happened. And that's a good reminder for us. In our journey, our spiritual journey with the Holy Spirit, just one day at a time. You don't have to become biblical scholars quickly. Just do it one day at a time. And we don't have to get beat up to finally get it. As you read the Bible, my analysis of the Bible for many years was, well, gosh, those folks had nothing else. One of the things they didn't have that was pointed out earlier, they didn't have a Bible. So their life was very, very difficult. And they didn't have the comforts that we have today. So whether, if you think about it, God and Christ was their hope was their only hope, which is still true today. But I'm telling you, I believe that the current situations that we are having 
In our world today are times of opportunity. Nehemiah has proven that to us. Time for us to rebuild, to rise up, to become part of the secular world that's out there. To renew and reset our spirituality. We don't have to be beat down to get it. The current situation that is happening in the country... I believe it's just a tap on the shoulder for us. God's wanting to wake us up as Christians. We don't want to be the prodigal son or the prodigal brother who remained within the church, didn't go away, felt like he was doing all of the right things, but became very jealous when the sinful son returned. And unfortunately, folks, sometimes that's the way we're looked at within the secular world. And a lot of it, I believe, is the church's fault. People believe they have to be clean when they enter in here. They don't have to be. We don't have to be beat down. Christ is tapping us on the shoulder now in this time to go out into the secular world to rebuild our church, and it needs to start right here, right now. Recently, Casting Crowns, one of my favorite contemporary Christian groups, and by the way, if you don't like contemporary Christian music, you better listen to the words because it, the, the words that you see are very similar to the words that Charles Wesley wrote, and they criticized him in the time as well. But Reese, they have, they have a song that's, that's titled, Start Right Here, Start Right Now. And it's called, when the people who are called by his name, if we surrender our pride and turn away from our ways, we will hear heaven and for, he, will, and he will forgive our sin. We, he will heal our land and it starts right here. But church, if we want to see a change out there in the world, it's got to start right here. It's got to start right now. We want blessings in our pockets. We keep our missions overseas. But for the hurting in our cities, would we even walk across the street? What if the church on Sunday was still the church on Monday too? What if we came down from our towers and walked a mile in someone else's shoes? Church, it's got to start right here. It's got to start right now listen to Brian as he does this song which is one of my favorites Rise Up Dark and all alone Growing comfortable Are you too scared to move And walk out of this tomb Buried underneath The lies that you believed Safe and sound Stuck in the ground Too lost to be found You're just asleep And it's time to leave Come on and rise up Take a breath, you're alive now Can't you hear the voice of Jesus calling us Out from the grave like Lazarus You're brand new The power of death couldn't hold you Can't you hear the voice of Jesus calling us Out from the grave like Lazarus Rise up Rise up out from the grave like Lazarus When he said your name The thing that filled your veins Was more than blood It's the kind of love That washes sin away Now the door is open wide The stone's been rolled aside The old is gone The light has come So come on and rise up Take a breath, you're alive now Can't you hear the voice of Jesus calling us 
Out from the grave like Lazarus, you're brand new. The power of death couldn't hold you. Can't you hear the voice of Jesus calling us? Out from the grave like Lazarus. Like Lazarus. Rise up. He's calling us to walk out of the dark. He's giving us new resurrected hearts. Oh, He's calling us to walk out of the dark. He's giving us new resurrected hearts. Oh, come on and rise up. Take a breath, you're alive now. Can't you hear the voice of Jesus calling us? Out from the grave like Lazarus, you're brand new. The power of death couldn't hold you. Can't you hear the voice of Jesus calling us? Out from the grave like Lazarus. He's calling us. You don't have to stay there. He's calling us, he's calling us out from the grave like Lazarus. Rise up, hear Jesus calling us. You know, if you are uh, at a time in your spirituality that things are just kind of dull. This is a time to rise up and, uh, and let your spirit, the great spirit that Jesus Christ has given us, the great comforter, be what leads you. Join me in this benediction. Heavenly Father, we hear you. We ask that your spirit come near to us. We ask that your Holy Spirit teach us. We ask that your Holy Spirit guide us. In your heavenly name, Father, we pray. Amen.